Hello, my name is Chris Runyard, and we're down here on Mount Scott Creek, down in the Three Creeks Natural Area today. This is in the Portland metropolitan area. And what, what we're going to look at is plastic in the wetlands, plastic in our oceans. In a little YouTube video, I'm calling Plastic Rivers, Plastic Oceans. We all know about the issues with the plastic in the oceans, and there's already some good videos on that. What I want to do is look at how that plastic gets here, and with my specialty, how us that work in the streams and wetlands can do a better job of making sure that the plastic out here doesn't show up in the plastic in the Pacific. So my job is to restore wetlands and streams for the city of Portland and also with my own landscape business. So we're always out in the wetlands, we're always planting trees, we're always killing weeds, and we're doing everything around uh, those activities. So today, let's go take a look at some of the wetlands and see what we can do to make sure that our plastic doesn't end up at the plastic island in the ocean. So we're up in Happy Valley Nature Park. Um, you see where the houses have been built right next to the wetlands. Um, and when they built them, they put up the silt fence, which is a pretty good idea why they're building and that helps um, the erosion and the soil not get into the streams. Um, but after you're done building, after a few years, um, once the soil is settled out a little better, you gotta take this out, because here's what happens when you don't take it out. Um, it gets buried under all this blackberry, and you can see you pull it up and it's just loaded with this thorny mess. And so you really gotta come all the way through here and start cutting it and pulling it and ripping it out. The reason you wanna do it is it's a polyfiber, once again, made out of petroleum. This will never disintegrate. So if you come back in a million years, most likely, this is still gonna be underneath all these blackberry brambles that were just cut yesterday. So let's take a look to see how far these things go. They're usually all over the wetlands. So here's some. More right here. Over here. More here. And still more all the way back in here with the dogwoods and the willows. You see, no one's ever coming to take this out. Except me, of course. We'll get this the next time we're out here. This whole section was blackberries, and we cut them down yesterday, and as we were cutting, we saw all the silt fence, which really was sad, but now that we know it's here, we'll come back and get it once the blackberry starts to disintegrate more. So you notice the blue tubes on things. Uh, the reason we tube trees is because a lot of things like to chew trees. Lately, any tree we plant gets chewed by rabbits within about a week, and so we put these little plastic tubes on them um, to protect them. The voles will chew them, the moles will chew them, uh, deer chew them, beaver, nutria, everything chews the trees. Um, and some things can reach above this two-foot tube, but it really protects the core of the tree to get it established over um, a few years. So while sometimes you need tubes, uh, you always need to take the tubes off, because in the end, the tree will stretch the tube and then bust the tube and it's just pl more plastic in our streams, rivers, wetlands um, and uplands. Uh, they'll just break apart eventually. But these plastic tubes never break down. So if you need to use them, and a lot of times you do, a lot of times you don't, uh, come back and take them off. So we've been through our whole site and we planted 21,000 trees and shrubs on this project alone. Um, we've gone back and taken off hundreds and thousands of tubes um, off the project. Plastic mesh tubes are cheap and quick to install. They work pretty well against rodents but have a nasty habit of disintegrating in the wetlands. Tubes from different manufacturers will last different lengths of time with some unexpectedly shredding at the end of year one and others lasting eight years or more before falling apart. Either way this plastic needs to be retrieved before they start to shatter or it's just more plastic in our rivers and oceans. Some local organizations have completely stopped using protective tubing, choosing to plant more trees of, spe of species less susceptible to chewing and accepting some predation. It is interesting to think that if you plant a red cedar, protect it with a tube and never return, that that plastic in the tube will still be plastic long after your red cedar is a thousand years old. Either way, if you tube, you must come back and account for the plastic if you don't want it to become garbage in our stream systems. Okay, a lot of you recognize this. It's flagging tape. Uh, it comes in different colors, made out of PVC, polyvinyl chloride, plastic. 
um, and also never breaks down. It breaks apart into small pieces. So we use this to flag things that we want to see in the future. So if we have small plants, if we have uh, maybe a tree we want to cut down or something we want to save, uh, you put different colors on it to mark it. You got to come back and get it out though because this stuff will end up in the, in the creek. So right here we're at a little uh, cluster of Oregon grapes. Down in here when you dig down, this was once white with red polka dots around the Oregon grape. It's fallen onto the ground. And then if you look down here, the bamboo that we use to mark this is also um, laying down in the grass. So you can see here where it's kind of disintegrated and then some of this was put down there. Once again, all these things got to come out of the wetlands or they end up either in the small food chain in the grassland or they end up in the streams with the next flood. So quite a few years ago for weed mats, we went to these burlap coffee bra bags. We can get them for free um, and they work for two to three years, keeping the, most of the grass out and most of the weeds down. So it works out really nice. They're biodegradable. You can see, you know, by now they're pretty much disintegrating. They're going back to the kind of natural fibers that they are. Um, and that's, that's pretty good. The one thing to know about these is there is a nylon string in it, which isn't going to break down. And so even at the end of three years, you pull it up and you see the string, even as this is all crumbling around it. So that still exists as plastic, poly, you know, nylon. Okay, we're back in another one of our wetlands that we replanted several years ago. During the replant, we did some irrigation on it. And irrigation can work really well, just gotta be careful about irrigation. As you'll see down here, uh, PVC pipe that was put above ground uh, is temporary and it gets cracked really quick. Um, whether it's some kids, you know, riding their bikes, whether it's the maintenance crew didn't see it, whether it's deer stomping on it, um, whatever the deal is with it. So this irrigation has a life, a life cycle, and so eventually you got to pick this stuff up. If you leave it to just rot in the grass, then there's PVC in the wetland for the remainder of eternity, really, because PVC, polyvinyl chloride, or any other plastic piping is never going to degrade. So this stuff, while it's... Um, sometimes helpful the first couple years of your project. It also needs to be removed at some point down the road. Garbage is very prevalent in our wetlands and along our streams. We see many illegal camps right next to flowing water. These camps tend to be loaded with plastic bags, straws, lids, tarps, and batteries, even plastic bags of poop. These camps wash out in the seasonal floods dispersing the plastic to eventually float with its plastic friends in the ocean. A late fall cleanup of these known camps can help keep this garbage in the landfills, not our oceans. Additionally, many streets and parking lots drain directly to our creeks. If you throw a cigarette butt out your car window, there's a good chance it will have a direct trip to your local stream. Cigarette butts made out of nylon, which are most of them, don't just disappear. They take a long trip out to the ocean where they can be eaten by animals that are unable to digest them. All right, thanks for checking out the video today. I hope it makes you think about plastic more. I know a lot of people are doing a lot of good work around streams and even in the cities doing good things to clean up our environment. Um, I, wanna, I wanna say that I've done all these things that I've said not to do today, but, but I also learned from them and had other people help me learn from them. So I don't believe in feeling guilty. So if you're feeling guilty about anything, don't. Feel motivated to do something different. And together we can get the plastic out of the streams and then minimize the plastic that's going into the ocean and eventually just get get rid of all the plastic that's headed out to the ocean so thanks and have a great time in your wetlands